all right, so this is the third time recording this video. I'm trying not to lose my mind. I just want to share my story with the world and whoever cares out there um, that Chase Bank is probably the worst corporation company that you could ever, ever do business with. Um, at least in my experience, I'm, I'm 33 years old. Um, not, not, you know, not old, not young and dumb, but I've seen some things and I, you know, I operated a business for a while and I, I know how most things work and operate. Well, I moved down here because Wisconsin was a little bit slow for me. I wanted a faster paced state with more things to do, uh, throughout more of the year. And, uh, I came down to Colorado with $25,000 cash on me. Um, I have, you know, other resources and means, I guess, but I came down with 25,000 cash and I was trying to stay away from using my credit cards as much um, because like the visceral experience of exchanging cash for goods is, is more real to me than using plastic sometimes. So I spend more more f wisely, I guess, and uh, I can m monitor my spending better. Well, I got my identity compromised uh, right before, or right when I came down in the way that my social security got stolen. Somebody probably in Wisconsin took, um, cause I didn't fill out credit card applications or anything like that, or it got compromised from a credit card company, but I was filling out applications for apartments in Wisconsin for a little while before I gave up on that and decided I just wanted to move. Somebody could have swiped my social security number from there and I think maybe that's that might have happened, but uh, I think it got put on the dark web and somebody picked it up and bought it and I have been dealing with identity theft issues ever since about January 22nd and you have to jump through a lot of hoops when that happens. Um, I had I found it out on a credit tracking app that I have through uh, called CreditWise through Capital One. I do recommend them, but I um, said that somebody had tried to open a bunch of credit cards in my name um, and I called up all the companies, spoke to them all. Um, two of them were just applications that did not get accepted because there was not enough information or something along those lines like the the companies picked up on it but chase because i actually had a credit card with chase um decided that they were going to um approve this random person using my social security number and they sent the credit card out to like i thought it was like new york or something but i talked to all these companies um tried to get it make them aware that what was happening was somebody was fraudulently using my social security number as well as uh, you know seeing uh, if it was going to impact me in any way if somebody had made purchases. No purchases were made that I know of. I caught it early. Um, Chase was the only one that mailed a card and they said that they got that turned off and taken care of and uh, they, were, they were on the same page as me with my social security number. They said that they were gonna put like a, a fraud alert on my account. Um, and I don't know if that means that you can't have any new neck, new activity whatsoever. I'm not a banker. Maybe people have been lying to me, but uh, I I needed a bank account, and I thought that actually Chase did a decent job. I only waited on the phone for their customer service fraud support for 45 minutes. It wasn't too bad, and they took care of it pretty easily and quick. So I was like. I need a bank to put some of this cash into, so I went to Chase. February 7th, I deposited $24,900, and uh, I, shortly after, about four days, did transfer 4000 money to bank account back home, and after that, I was letting the account sit because I was not really using it just yet. Um, it was only like two or three weeks, and then... I guess on March 8th or March 10th, I would, on a whim, I decided to log in online and see, you know, that my balance uh, was what I expected it to be and everything was good. You know, I just check my finances every once in a while and I couldn't log in. So I start going through the process of calling customer service and stuff like that. Uh, probably maybe like two hours on the phone between on hold and giving my information to customer service 
could they just basically tell me, oh no sir, there is nothing that we can see on your account. Um, there has been a fraud alert issued on your account. And at this point, I'm kind of like freaking out. I'm like, oh, fraud alert? Um, not again, you know, how did this happen? Um, so basically, um, when I opened the bank account, I made them aware. Uh, I, they were on the same page as me of what was going on with my social security number. There was no problem with them. Um, I did talk to, you know, Chase Fraud about opening an account briefly uh, after the initial breach of my social security number. And they said, yeah, you can open a bank account with us. That's fine if you need to. Um, well, apparently what had happened was they placed a fraud alert on my account. And then on February 18th, so 11 days after I opened the account, fraud uh chase fraud decided that there were too many suspicious indicators or something like that it just there there wasn't in the notes somebody didn't do their job and put into the notes that like i i verified my identity when i was going in there with the account they just decided they were going to close the account that i opened in denver um of course, I tried to call the branch in Denver, and uh, Chase doesn't give the, you know their employees that are in branch uh, much much power other than to you know act as a teller and fill out forms um, and, and direct you in the right way to go. Most of the corporate stuff that Chase does does is like they call it backroom um, and over the phone, but. Um, I had to sit on hold for these people and the Chase branch that I did call, I said, hey, you know, I just want to make sure before I'm calling this Chase fraud number that you're giving me that they are open after like five or six o'clock. And he said, yes, they were. But I sat on hold respectively three different times, like an absolute chump, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, I think it was like two and a half hours and then three hours and 15 minutes. I have the call logs right here. I keep track of who I talk to, how long I talk to them, how long I'm on hold, and I am not gonna lie, the, the, I've been chasing my money for quite a while. Since then, I've been on hold with Chase or talking to them for about 14 hours of my life, and that is way too much. But um, basically, um, the branch wasn't able to do anything. I tried to call up Chase Fraud. They told me, oh, well, I was worried about the, you know, they said a check had been mailed out for the amount when you close the account. I'm freaking out again. Like, where'd you mail the check to? Well, of course, they mailed it back to Wisconsin to the incorrect address. Um, and I, I made them aware. And they said, all right, we're going to cancel the check then. And then you need to give us an address or you could possibly go into a branch and open up a new account. And um, I, I, I thought I thought that's what the first customer service fraud specialist told me on the phone. You can open up an account and we might be able to get some money in there. But I would have to ask about that. But we're probably going to have to send a check. And I said, okay, well... Um, I'll get an address in the area and you can send a check. Um, and I had to spend $85, go to U UPS store and get basically like a, a PO box without a PO in front of it. So it wasn't the PO box number. And I uh, went into the branch that I opened the account in with that address. We and uh, I talked to an associate in the store and we got fraud on the line on the phone. And all three of us together, conclusively, um, I gave them the address to send the, the check to. And they told me that a check was being issued in that amount. And you would have to wait uh, approximately six business days. I was not happy about the six business days. Um, but, uh, I, I, you know, it is what it is. So I wait patiently. And six business days goes by. It is now uh, March 22nd, right now. It is a six business day. I wake up in the morning. I go to the, the UPS store, check the box, see if there's a check in there. Of course, there's no check in there. So I call up Chase and I say, hey, you guys were supposed to have issued me a check. Uh, where is it? And they give me a tracking number. It's UPS. So I walk back into the UPS store instead of like typing it up online. But uh, they tell me that it was sent to address in Wisconsin.
So they did it twice. Not only did um, they close the account, basically just told me that it was because of my social security number. They didn't give me any better reason than it was because of my social security number when I talked to fraud. They closed the account initially because of my social security number and we were all on the same page. Like I said, I talked to Chase Fraud and I went into that, that branch and we were all on the same page with that. So it's not new information and that's what they're telling me. And then they send out the check to the wrong address, not once, but twice. So <coughs> I was in the Chase branch today in Arvada, Westminster, and I think 64th. And uh, basically they're telling me they got on the phone with fraud, sat there for like 30 minutes, and they're telling me that it's going to take 10 days to cancel the check that they sent out, it's going to take 10 days. And then I, after those 10 days is up, I can come back in and I can request them to send me another check. And it's going to take that six day, six business day ma mailing period on top of that. So I'm not happy right now. I have talked to the police twice. I've talked to attorneys. Um, the situation is ridiculous. Basically they're telling me that, uh, um, if I need to send litigation to Chase to get my money back, I'm most likely going to have to do it at the corporate branch because all the decisions in their company are made by corporate and their headquarters is in New York. So I need to hire some fucking New York lawyer to send letters to them that say I want my money back. I mean, they're telling me that I'm going to get it, but they can't get any of their information right. And I literally just tried to purchase something using that Chase credit card that I had. And that was in turn also declined. So the Chase customer service is the worst. The, the Chase is the worst company to deal with. Do not bank with them. You might get your money stolen. You're going to get your time wasted. Um, their, their customer service is terrible. You're just a number at this bank. Do not use Chase. I, I, I urge you, don't be in a situation that I'm in where I'm just being made out to be a chump and I have to wait for Chase Corporate to decide how long until they get certain things done now, you know, that they were able to do more immediately before. I, I'm having a bad time right now. Um, I might... I might pursue legal action depending on how long this draws out, but this this twenty thousand dollars was a huge part of my life trying to come from Wisconsin to Denver area or just Colorado area. I don't really want to be in Denver necessarily, but Colorado area and uh, start over. So thanks, Chase. Don't be you know. If I got any advice for people, don't 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 bank with Chase. Don't be like me.